uh, there's an obstacle, there's elbows that you have to run into, okay? So after that, the next partner will do this. Heroes, you need this. We do a lot of abanico. It's all the, either we call it we tick, abanico fanning motions. Majority of the videos you're gonna see or once you look, you go to the seminar, it's all about fanning motions. And how we sneak those fanning motions so we can hit you with speed. I did write an article, maybe this will clear a little bit. We have two stages, the way I see it, and the way Tito uh, Owit, or Jim Owit, uh, taught me. And I just put it in two words. Okay? Uh, the what he taught me is the drills. The way I see it is, we have drills that we just go as fast as we can. Regardless of where it went. What I meant by where it lands is most of our targets will be our, sh our shoulders and the legs. It doesn't matter what part of the arm hits, as long as you go as fast as you can. So we drill those and we have a hold and we have knot, knots and we hit the knot. We just hit and hit. So we're practicing speed. In some days when I come, he wants specific targets. So he, because we work out close to the beach, he, there's poles that he put on the sand, the big bamboo poles about this big, all lined up, and you have to stand there and hit the top of those poles with the first inch of your stick. So now he's going, he's not telling me, but just said, you, you can't miss, you have to hit all those. All they're lined about 10 different heights, and you have to hit, you have to bend, you have to hit, and then sometimes you go forward, you go, you go from the right, go to the left, left, right, left, left. And then he goes, now increase the speed. Then after I did that, then he's going to go spar. When you spar, now you have to have, you need to now figure out a reasonable speed that you can hit the target. I think that's the main difference of our art to regardless of what other, if we're Balintala, other arts. That means now, if I'm gonna hit, if I wanna use hit the star, I will say, I'm gonna hit that star. Or if I'm gonna say, I wanna hit that knuckle, I'm gonna hit that knuckle. That's the way I see the Rosa de Cuerdas. In a way, my journey to FMA, Sarada was the same way with me, because when I was learning, with Master Jimmy Takosa, he will say, pick a target and hit it. But we don't drill like what in Hirosa, we have holes that we hit. Mm -hmm. Actually, my students right now, I tell them to make a pole mm -hmm. that you can hit horizontally and up and down. Mm -hmm. Specifically to hit, to learn speed and precision. I think that's the main difference and the, the way we enter is a little bit different. <coughs> Maybe the block might be similar, but we call it the one click. We go one click and we go. Mm -hmm. And we, the way we do it is we constantly attack you. Uh, but we don't disregard blocking. So for us, we always try to go, we block and attack at the same time. Okay. It's kind of hard to explain without yeah, execution. Uh, maybe later we just put some yes. Do we have like basic 12 angles of attack, something like this too? Like we don't have 12 angles of attack. We have 12 targets. Okay. So we call them targets, we don't call them uh, ang uh, uh, angles. The reason for that is the cuerdas in Spanish, <sighs> what the heck is Kevin? He, he's the one who plays the guitar, but maybe later on we'll pull him out, right? It's playing the chord. So you know how to play a uh, No, so what am I going okay. We'll pretend I know how, I don't know if this is A, okay? So if you have an A, that's all the way up here, uh, a guitarist can play an A all the way down here. He can strum this way, he can strum this way, or he can just do the thumb. That's how we play Hirosa. We can, we can hit you with one target coming this way. When we spin it, it's still hitting the same target, even though it's coming from a different direction, 
we still call it target number one. So we call specific target location target because we hit we we tick. We really can't hit big muscles. Right now we hit big muscles because that's when we train. But in reality, you want to hit specific targets, collarbone, eye, ears, jaw. So when we practice, that's where we try to hit. And that sometimes when we de we defend, those angles are in line with our vision. You know, um, eye protection is necessary, even though I don't wear it. <laughs> but eye protection sometimes is really needed because accidentally it can happen. It lands there. So we don't have angles uh, to, to answer a story. We have targets, we call them targets, 12 targets. And then in Panita, what we have? Both can feed, both can attack. So, it's mostly free sparring, but the rule is you can, if you want to practice your defense, so that you just let, just let him attack and you defend. If you get tired of defending, then you attack him. But it's your decision on what, how you're going to fight him, okay. spar him. He has to make his own decision. You don't tell him, oh, it's time for me to attack. If he wants to attack you, he's willing to attack you. Mm -hmm. But if it's instructional, if we're learning, of course the instructor will, you defend you. But when we just say we call it play, when you want to play, yeah. you don't have to tell your partner what you want to do. You can just stand there and he hits you. Then you decide, I'm, I'm tired of it, I'm going to hit you back. Okay. You know? Or it's too painful already. <laughs> let, me, let me go blood. Yeah. Okay. So there's no <clears throat> set pattern of who feeds who okay. uh, and who, who, who we I just try to compare with how we used to practice and then see if you do the same way of Sometimes it falls like that. Um, I'll, you, you, you learn from Nick Miller, so I, I went to see him also in Sydney. Oh, so he goes, hey Paul, why don't you uh, defeat him? So I fed. But I was so used to switching and I said, what the hell just happened? You gave it back to me, now I'm the one attacking you. And I said, I don't know GM, I'm just so used to, I can't sit on just attack or defend. I tend to switch and give it, give it to my partner. So, because I'm so used to that format. Unless it's being counted, like, okay, let's do angle one, angle two, three, four, then I can follow. But if you're just gonna play, Sometimes I lose it. I gave it to you, I take it back, mm -hmm. give it back to you. The next thing you know, you don't know which one was feeding. Yeah, in the higher stages of the little ones, like this, but the beginning students first learn how to defend, and then later you learn how to feed. And then yes. after that, both guys have learned the whole thing. Then it's more, okay, let's see who's feeding now and who's receiving now, and then it's become. Yes. Better, but there's a lot of for that. And that's probably the similarities between the two. In reality, on the, on the seminar, I can decide to myself if I want, if I want to start with offense or go defense first. But we don't have a specific, no, you have to start defense or offense. And then, uh, I, I told me that uh, now we have a curriculum. Yes. This curriculum, who did it? The old masters usually don't have a curriculum, right? Yes. So somebody had to put it together and say, okay, maybe we have to, to uh, organize it a little bit. There's actually two curriculum that exist right now. When they open their martial arts school in Cebu, they, they, they have what they call warrior uh, certificates. You can go, I think, to warrior seven. But it still needs clarity. I'm reading it, I'm like, I don't know what this one is. And then GM Ward goes, you, you learned that, but it's this way. And I'm thinking like, well, let's, we have to change his wording. Mm -hmm. uh, now being in the US, and I need to learn how to teach this to Americans. I, some of them, they don't like the old way of learning. So based on what I learned, I need to them to learn how to, how can they remember, because there's no name. 
So I start putting names in there. That's when I developed my own curriculum. Then when I developed, but when I was developing this, GMO it was still alive. Mm -hmm. So I actually showed it to GMO and I said, this is how I, I call this, is it okay? His answer is like this. If I see your student and they're doing what is required, I don't, know, I don't care about the name, as long as they can do it, as long as they're doing their own. So the name doesn't matter. As long as I'm accomplishing what needs to be learned by the student. And uh, you program how many levels do you have? I go up to five levels to get instructorship. After the five levels, our system has seven subsystems. Mm -hmm. Then you can either specialize on any of them or just keep learning in between mm -hmm. and little parts of them comes in. Or you can just specifically go, let's say, uh, let's say figure eight. You just want to be an expert on figure eight. You just keep doing figure eight. And figure eight is one of these sub seven sub uh, systems, or what are the seven sub systems? There is seven. Uh, actually, there's eight already. Okay. Figure eight has been taken out. Yes. But we, before he passed away, we asked him if we can put it back in, making it number eight. Mm -hmm. But it's, uh, we put an asterisk on it. Okay. Because if you actually look at our logo, there's only seven stars. Mm -hmm. So it represents seven subsystems. Okay. The, because we took out one, we put another one in there. Mm -hmm. So what happened is, what I was being taught is the addition to the art. Um, the people, the grandmaster, Bebo, Rene, Bonchal, they learn the figure eight. When Richard, B, G, and Donda was learning, he said, do not do figure eight anymore. So they have the old, we have the addition to the old. So what are the seven substances? Uh, uh, a spark, uh, a smoke screen, slashing, bombing, the delta, scratching, rolling, and the one with the asterisk, figuring. Uh, and we talked about the similarities, right? If you do Balintawa, you guys have slashing. We do, we do it a lot. Don't sink down. Never sink down. Because these are quick defenses. You have no idea that the guy came in. It is almost like it's an emergency, I have to do something. Right? Especially wiper, wiper is emergency. It's like flies comes in and they're gonna attack you. Oh my God, <laughs> right? If it's a bunch of bees or flies are coming into you, you do open, close, you're not gonna, some of them are gonna sneak in because they're coming fast. So you go, right? Maybe one or two will come, but at least the majority of them might, you, they, you might stop them. I mean, this arms wise, no specific one. You just have to make sure if you know this arm, you should be able to do it in play. Okay, so it's not like we do this is our number one and this no, is No, we don't have to. Us is, you want to do your number one? The way it sits there, uh, it will show this arm, and it's going to go, okay. While you're playing, see if you can do it. But no specific name. Okay. And then, from my experience, I found out that there's a few disarms that will really go fast and work faster than the rest. But it's it's nice for you guys that you guys are organized. It actually makes my job easier. <laughs> I'm just gonna go into over here and try this one. If I think about the beginning students who never did any disarm before, then it's good for him to maybe learn some basic. I give the most I give the most common one that happened and it just it for some reason it just keeps coming up. And then if they want something new, then I show it to them, but in play, the first one that I keep is usually the one that comes. So the first two or three is always there. Yeah. This is uh, also a char characteristic I think about the Balintawa system I do. Because we have a number of system like this is number one, this is number one, this is number two. But 
some of these designs, uh, I think, if, when it's going very fast, it's very hard to do that. So for me, the real Vanita art is something that's maybe concentrated on three yes. sounds, maybe, that are for me really the Vanita art because it's working in that way. Correct. And the other stuff, maybe some more modern styles, like the very fancy designing, um, is, uh, it's, it's, maybe it's nice to have like 500 designs from, for number one, for angle number one, but it's not realistic. So it's just a collection of designing, but actually, yeah, what for? So I think uh, every style should have his own uh, his maybe designing program, and not doing everything, but doing what is right, and then stop. Don't do more. Because sometimes if you do more, it becomes uh, wrong. So I think uh, this will be a big difference, for example, uh, between like older styles yes. and maybe more modern developments in the FMA. But maybe we talk about that in the next. Yeah, that would be a good topic.